Hello and welcome to the preview show as we look ahead to this afternoon's game against MK Donza at Portman Road. I'm delighted to say that we're joined by Sky Sports News Northwest correspondent James Cooper. How are you doing, James? Yeah, not too bad. It's been one of those weeks, isn't it? It suddenly feels as though we're on a front foot, there's a new dawn and, and fingers crossed it's all as good as it sounds. That the, the wrapping and everything feels a bit like going into Christmas again, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's a huge week in the club's history with, with Game Changer 20's takeover of the club. You were in the press conference uh, earlier in the week with new chairman Mike O'Leary and co-owner Brett Johnson from the Free Lines. What, firstly, what was your reaction to that press conference? Yeah, it was amazing. And firstly, credit to you for playing a card so close to your chest and, uh, and not telling me what was going on. You did a great job there. So the club can be really, really proud of one of their employees not, not telling anyone what's going on. But um, it was a weird one, you know, to be told or to be asked through the press conference for your own club. It's like, um, what, one, what am I going into this as? Is it a fan or as a journalist? And it was like pulling off one hat and putting another hat on and hoping that you're asking the right questions that Ipswich Town fans want to know, but also the right ones for, for other people as well. And I, I thought they came across really, really good. I think, you know, on the positive side, these are football people who know how football works, you know, whether that be obviously Brett in the US and some of the other teams that he's involved in, or whether it's Mike who's who's clearly done that in this country as well. And I think just their understanding of football is, is an advantage and, and progress. And I, I think also, you know, most Ipswich Town fans will probably agree with me on this, this willingness to, uh, to communicate from, from the word go. You know, I, I, all I'd qualify it with is just all these things tend to start on a positive note. Let's just hope it carries through as that. And I think for them, it's just a shame that the first home game that they're in charge, it isn't kind of the razzmatazz that we might expect. It is another empty Portman Road with, with MK Dons coming to town. It's a shame we haven't got that moment of celebration because I think after the year we've had so many Ipswich Town fans, we just love to turn up to Portman Road and say, thank goodness some of that has gone and here's to the future. Absolutely. It's brilliant to see so much optimism amongst the fan base now and it's, like you say, it's back to business with MK Dons this afternoon and, and Ipswich really are running out of games if they are to make the playoffs, aren't they? It was disappointment on Easter Monday against Rochdale. Um, if they're going to get three points, they really need to be better than that, don't they? You're absolutely right. And, and I, I, you know, I'd love to be really positive, but you look at the kind of end of the season and, and yeah, you know, there are eight kind of winnable games there for Ipswich Town Football Club. But you also look at the record, you know, I, I think only the top two have won more at home. And yeah, I think of, of the the top sort of six, uh, no one's won fewer games away. And, and you look, we've got three home games and we've got, I think, five away games. And that, that starts to make you worry. And then you look at the last three games. We, we chat about it, you know, um, over the last couple of weeks. I expected minimum seven points in the last three games. And here we are looking at five. And all, although we are knocking on the playoffs and, and Mike and Brett were right to say with a fair wind, we might get there. And it'd be fantastic. We could get to the playoffs and then into the championship. But I think there was also a reality check within the press conference with a pair of them that that's probably unlikely to happen. And I don't want to pour cold water over it. And maybe we'll get that kind of knock on effect from the players and maybe they will get that boost. Okay. But you've got to say, having not registered a shot on goal at Rochdale, it, it doesn't bode well. Mm, exactly. And that, that is one area that does need to improve because defensively as a unit, they've, they've been pretty solid and they're, they're up there within the top six of, of the league for clean sheets, but it, it really is just going forward. I don't know what it, if it, don't know what you think, James, whether it's a lack of confidence, belief, just having that bit of arrogance in the final third. That's, that's the area. Yeah, I, think, really... I think it's all those things. That, uh, Sorry. Yeah, Bill. you're absolutely right. I, you know, the Bristol Rovers game was really interesting in the sense that, you know, we got those two goals really early uh, and they were kind of presented on a plate to us a little bit. And you kind of think, well, maybe things are turning. Maybe, you'll, you know, we'll get some momentum and some belief from that. But then you go to Rochdale, and as I say, not to get a shot on target against the bottom team. We've only won once at home. You know, it's just not good enough for this kind of bunch of players and for this football club for where it wants to be. You know, I, I, I talked to you earlier. I was looking through a, a thread on TWTD about the last sort of five or six years and what's been said. And here we are in the third tier of English football. I thought they were kind of stories that my dad told about Ipswich being in third division south. And I can tell them to my sons as well. It's just not right. And yet the reality is, you know, we go into a game against MK Dons hoping to win, but probably expecting another dreadful draw which is an awful way of me going about it because I'm meant to be talking the game up and, and making people feel excited because I think there is an excitement around the football club that, that really needs to be built upon. Yeah, and let's just just look into town's opponents this afternoon in a bit more detail. MK Dons they they really do play a, a good brand of football don't they? Russell Martin's got them playing a really possession based brand of football and they've they, I think it was it we were chatting before it's only Man City and 
PSG, is that right, that have got a higher average possession than MK Dons who play in the third tier of English football. So they will stick to their principles. They'll play that way. They played that way against Burnley in the FA Cup. So you know what you're going to get from them in terms of a style, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I think what I hate about it more than anything is that we're paying compliments to somebody who's been kind of schooled through Norwich, obviously in Russell Martin. That doesn't ring well with me at all. I don't like it. And then you look at their kind of lineup and you see Andrew Cernan there and you see Cameron Jerome, you think, help, you know, that there's been, I'm sure Ipswich Town fans would agree with me. You can look at a game and think, well, he's going to score against us or he is. And you kind of think that's all set up nicely for Cameron Jerome if he's picked. But, you know, putting that all to one side, I saw them play at, at Burnley, albeit, of course, that's the start of the year. And they were the better team in the FA Cup. You know, they stuck to those principles. Burnley couldn't get a lot of the ball. They went 1-0 up, should have got a second. Good save by uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell on his near post. Then they go to penalties, miss another chance just before that and go out of the, of, of the competition. But they were the better team. Uh, and, and I think Russell Martin is building something really well there. And, and you look around their squad and there are names you know. He's got Will Grigg to call upon. Um, albeit, I think there is the inconsistency there, much like perhaps Ipswich, where... They're going into games knowing they can play probably the teams off the park in terms of keeping the ball, but they're probably lacking a little bit of the, of the cutting edge, albeit, of course, you know, last five games they've won four and lost one. So, you know, they're, they're, they're clearly building a little bit of momentum. But as I say, what really hurts me being an Ipswich fan is that we're saying nice things about somebody who's been schooled in Norwich. They, they, they had a bad result on, on Monday against Crew, lost 2 0. But as you alluded to just then, they've, in total, is that they've won four of their last six. And I, th- I suppose at one point they probably were looking at looking at the at the top six and thinking that's not out of their reach, but they'll just be looking to finish the season as as well as they can, really, won't they? Yeah, I think they're in a, in a similar sort of boat to Ipswich, and, and and in saying that, people will probably think, well, he thinks we're not going to get into the playoffs. I, I mean, truly, I hope that we do get into the playoffs, but I can also see an argument where that doesn't happen because it just seems to be petering out. But I think. Hopefully what Paul Cook will be saying to the players is, look, you know, I'm looking around this dressing room, I'm working out who I want next season and who I want to add to uh, as a base. And I think Russell Martin will be looking at the same thing with MK Dons. You know, these are players playing for their futures. And I think after, particularly after this season where, you know, we've had COVID, we've had no fans, you know, there's going to be an awful lot of kind of free transfer activity, a lot of players uh, not knowing about their futures. And I think it's almost a chance for... Ipswich players and MK Don players to stake a claim. And, and what that should add, to, add up to is a really, really good game at Portman Road. But I can see it in your eyes as well. <laughs> You're not certain it's going to be one. I, I'd take a 1-0 win right now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would. Three points on the board is, as Paul has alluded to in his press conferences, he's, you know, as much as talking about the future and, and building something in the summer, which he says that fans will be excited about, Ultimately, it's about this final game because we've still got a chance of promotion. So we'll take three points any which way they'll come. But that's the incredible thing, having had the run that we've had, you know, having, as I said, had those five points from nine, we're still knocking on the door. You know, there's no one really pulling away. There's no one really putting some form together. So if if Paul can get that from this set of players, find the right balance, whether it's one man up front, whether it's playing with a two, as he did over the last couple of games, you know, hopefully it will come. But, but the evidence so far is that, that I think at the moment it's too big an ask. And that, as I say, what I'm hoping is that the feel-good factor that I've got, and I know that all the Ipswich fans that I've spoken to over the past couple of days have got, I hope that permeates into the dressing room and they come out and put a bit of show on. You know, Because I think also the likes of Mike and Brett will look at it and think, maybe we're not coming from quite so far back. Maybe we can get from somewhere. Um, because I think you know what they want to do is draw a line in the sand and say, you know, Ipswich Town Football Club doesn't sink any lower. We're now looking up. And I, I'd just like to think that the dressing room's the same. Absolutely. Town will, they'll be hoping that, that James Norwood, Kane Vincent Young, Flynn Downs, three really key players who have, have missed out with injury. They'll remains to be seen whether they'll be back in contention, but that'll be a real big plus if they're back. I think you're right. You know, and, and you know, talking to Ipswich fans, that there are certain players who are kind of a bit Marmite-ish those three that you've mentioned aren't my might at all because they're all good players, you know, and, and, and what they do is kind of strengthen the ingredients when, when they're there. You know, Kane Vincent Young has been so, so desperately unlucky with injuries. I, I feel a bit sorry for him in the sense that everyone pins their hope on him and he's a fullback, but he is so good and it would be great to have him back. James Norwood I've spoken to about before because I think he does things that Ipswich players don't usually do. He's a bit nasty, a bit not nice and, and makes life difficult for defenders. And I think Flynn Downs has, has proven a lot of character this season, bearing in mind what he's been through, you know, the transfer request at the start of the season. I think he's come through and shown leadership credentials. I think he's shown a lot of maturity. So there, there are plus points there. And there's no doubting that you put those three into the starting 11 
and we're a better proposition than we are without them. You know, and I think equally, they are three players where you look and think, yeah, I, I can see big arguments for you being here next season and, and building around you rather than thinking, nah, you're not, you're, you're not for me. I mentioned Ipswich is key men there for, for MK Dons, for the opponents. Scott Fraser is a player who always takes the eye quite nicely. I think he's been involved in 17 goals this season. Um, so he's, he's a dangerous player, left-sided player. And, and we've already mentioned Cameron Jerome, who, who Luke Chambers will, and Matt Gill will know all too well about. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think Fraser keeps them ticking over very nicely. A really tidy player, and I think you, you know he, he kind of conducts the orchestra a little bit, as you say, from the from the left. And I think you know Cameron Jerome won't need anything else other than the away dressing room in Portman Road just to fire him up. I think he, he's going to prove problematic tomorrow. And you know, take, put it all to one side and saying you know we don't like Norwich, and that's clear. Um, this is a good player, especially at this level, who scores goals and and, and can be a threat. You know, you. Bless him, you'd love Cameron Jerome to be playing for Ipswich if you haven't played for Norwich. So that's the kind of threats we're talking about. And I think what we can perhaps expect um, is, is Ipswich chasing the ball a little bit. I think that's the one thing that will be hard to get hold of the ball and, and dictate terms. But, you know, Paul Cook knows that. He knows what he's facing here. And I think it might be playing almost on the counter-attack and trying to nick stuff because, you know, the, the ball will be in front of you a lot of the time. What do you, how, how do you see the game panning out then, James? What should, can I press you for a score prediction? Oh, you know, as I said, I, I was hoping for seven from nine or even nine from nine, and we've got five from nine. Um, I would say Ipswich nick it one nil, but that's, that's completely hard. Um, and I would say on the head, one one, and, and I fear, you know, it'll be Cameron Jerome scoring uh, for MK Dons. I, I hope not, because, you know, three points would change things as well. Three points would be a front foot looking up and thinking, right, we can get into the playoffs. We can do something special. But I think we're all looking for that spark at the moment and it doesn't seem to be happening. Let's hope it will be three points this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for your time, James, on the preview show. As always, town fans, don't forget that you can still buy your iFollow match passes for the first game under new ownership for £10 on the club website. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs>